Hello everyone, I am Rohit from Talent Battle and I welcome you all for this informative video series for InfiTQ developed by Talent Battle. This video series will be helpful for you to get all the updates about InfiTQ and we will be posting all the InfiTQ related learning videos on our YouTube channel so that it will be easy for you to get all the related material and it will be like one stop solution. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for off campus updates and make your career path easy with talent battle. Also do join our WhatsApp and Telegram groups. I have added the link in the description section. In this video about Java questions, they have mainly focused on loops, objects, references, conditional statements, strings, list and inheritance. The difficulty level of this question is moderate. So we will solve one by one. And let's hope it will be helpful for you. So the first question is what is the output of the following code snippet? So if you see the code snippet given over here, the looping for loop is mentioned over here and the conditions of looping are there. So the variable loop is initialized to 0 and the condition less than 5 is been given. And after checking the internal part of this particular loop, we will be incrementing this variable by loop plus plus. So I assume that the initially loop value is 0 and we will be checking the condition that 0 is less than 5. So for the first case, 0 is less than 5, it is positive. So it will go and it will check the condition at 0 greater than 2. So this is false. Continue. Again going 0 greater than 4. Again this is false. So it will directly go and print the loop value. So on the output screen, I will get 0 first. That will again come back and incremented value of loop will be there. So the loop becomes 1. Again the condition is checked 1 less than 5. Again this is positive. So it will go inside the loop. Again it will check 1 greater than 2. False. 1 greater than 4. Again false. And it will print the loop value. So we will get 1 over here. Again the same case happens and my loop value will be incremented and it becomes 2. Now 2 greater than 2 is not there. So that is why it becomes consideration that this condition is again false. Moving ahead 2 greater than 4 again it becomes false. So I can say like this. This will be false. 2 greater than 4 this will also be false and it will be printing the value of Right. So now when the loop condition is again incremented and it becomes 3, then in that case 3 greater than 2 is false. It is true now. So it will continue and instead of going inside this particular loop, it will again go back and then it will go for 4 greater than 2 and then 5. But when it comes to 5, my loop condition less than 5 that is 5 less than 5 will not be satisfied and the termination occurs. So the entire execution can give me the output like 0, 1, 2 only depending upon the condition of the loop. So according to that option A is the correct option for this question. Moving ahead, in the second question we have two classes. The What is the output of the following code snippet is the question and in the code snippet we have two classes. One is class build and second one is class demo. If you go with the main uh, function or main method which is present in the class demo, so you can see the object creation is done for the class build with the value 10. So I can uh, say the object creation is done for this and the value 10 is being mentioned over here. Now whatever the object creation instance of that respective object is created for the build class. So in that build we can see that the method with a variable that is item price is being mentioned right so this will hold the value right now that is 10 and then we will be printing it with the help of println method that build object dot item price so first it will give me the output like 10 after that it is calling the display function now i can access this build object dot item price because it is comes under the category of availability that is access specifier so it is not private so we can access it outside the class 
when we call build object dot display it will pass the control to the display method which is again a part of uh, build after build and in that a local variable is declared that is item price it holds the value 20 so after 10 we got 20 with the help of println we are printing that item price so this is also possible because it is a local method and within that function we can directly initialize and display the value of the local variable so the final output of this code will be 10 and 20 so according to that my option b is the correct option for this particular question in the third question consider the code snippet which is given below here and the question is how many objects and how many reference variables of the class customer will be created so if you see the main method first object customer is created now you know that in java with the help of new the object is created so with these two lines we can say that two objects are created and simultaneously the references to that object that is object and object one are created so two objects two references with this particular two lines in the third line you can see customer object two so this is just a reference created so plus one reference and in the third case value assignment of the obj is done to another reference again so this is also the reference case again plus one so plus one plus one so we can say four references so these are my four references created and these two are my objects so two objects and four references are created for the class customer so two objects and four references so b is the correct answer for this particular question now in this particular question number four a snippet of code is given and in that snippet of code they have worked with the values a simple decisional uh, code is there and depending upon the array elements whatever is provided here consider the array elements which is having six elements and the low value is given as 0 and high value is given as 5 and the elements of the array are as follows like 5, 6, 9, 12, 15, 29. So there are total 6 elements which are given in this sequence. So the question is find the number of iterations when using binary search if the element to be searched is 6. So we have to search 6 and we have to identify how many number of iterations will it take with the help of binary search to identify the number 6 or to search the number 6. Now if it focus on the given snippet of code you can see that uh, first they are checking the condition that low is less than equals to high and after that they are calculating the mid value with this formula an uh, integer value is there and depending upon the result of this they are checking the condition first equals to mid value equals to the element to be searched and then less than elements to be searched and depending upon the result if and else that whether i will increment into the mid value or i will decrement into the mid value right so we will see this uh, considering the array that they have been provided so if i uh, put an array structure over here with the elements that they have been provided and adding them correspondingly whatever is provided 5 6 9 12 15 and 29 if I am writing the index variable positional value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. This is my index value. Okay. Now whatever the formula they have been provided for calculating the mid value. Right here it is the formula they have given. And the integer output will be there as mentioned. So if I consider the first iteration. If I consider the first iteration. My low value is 0 as provided my high value is 5 and if I calculate the mid value that will come 2 right say like low plus high divided by 2 so 0 plus 5 divided by 2 and we will focus on the integer value so that comes 2 and according to that if I check the condition a of mid greater than element to be searched right say like uh, search element and in such case my low is 0 now this condition is like my mid value comes 2 so my element is 9 and where my 9 is greater than 6 so this is true so when this is true my high should be uh, equals to mid minus 1 
depending upon the given code i equals to mid minus 1 so it will become 1 so i will utilize this in my next iteration so after one iteration i cannot find the element now in the second iteration in the second iteration my low value is 0 whereas my high value is 1 coming here and according to that i am calculating the mid value that is low plus high 0 plus 1 divided by 2 right so it again comes with as 0 so now i will check the condition for this second iteration a of mid less than search element because my mid value is 0 so a of 0 is 5 so my 5 is less than 6 because 6 is my search element as given in the question right here so 5 less than 6 so this condition is true so according to that i will go with low is equals to mid plus 1 it becomes 1 because my mid is 0 0 plus 1 becomes 1 and my high value will be incremented and that will be 1 now i will be utilizing this again so after second iteration also i did not get the element now in the third iteration i will be checking it again so for third iteration my low value is 1 which is coming from here right then my high value is 1 updated 1 and according to that my mid value becomes 1 plus 1 divided by 2 that is 1 clear now if i am checking a of mid it means a of 1 is equals to search element right so the a of mid means a of 1 is my 6 6 equals to 6 right so this becomes true so after third iteration i got the element that i was searching for so the answer for this is option c correct answer that after third iteration i will be getting the answer right Moving towards the next question, question number 5. What is the output of the following code snippet? So we have to just identify the output for this. So if you start with the main method, again we got some variables uh, mentioned over here which are already initialized. Some string variables are also there and then calculation with the if condition. So if I write whatever is given, we have first uh, var of integer type which holds the value 22. We have another uh, var which holds value 7 we have another integer variable result right now we don't have the value of this after that we have a str a string type which holds the value as 1 we have another string variable another str which holds the value as 2 and then we have a formula for calculating the result so if i calculate this result equals to where var contains 22 multiply by another var divided by another var so i have 7 by 7 so that will be like 22 multiply by 1 that is 22 so my result becomes 22 and after that i am checking this condition so if result is 22 less than 22 so it means this is false so false means it will directly jump to the else block and this will be executed so system out print ln method another str this is the string variable that will be printed and what is the value for another str that is 2 so the output will be option d for this question the output is option d 2 will be printed on the screen moving ahead for the sixth question what will be the output of the below code so they have given a class called list example and in the main method list is created the name is array list and in that particular list we have these options right uh, line by line they have added the list that i love java language so these are the lists that they have added and after that they have created an iterator object reference which is calling the list of list dot iterator method now if you focus the type of the value that they are working on so this is somewhat list type value is mapped is mapped with object type right if you see the left hand side of this method iterator object type is created with the list dot iterator so list type is mapping with the object type so they are trying here and this will produce error 
because type mismatch right hand side type is mismatch with the left hand side and this program will provides error of type mismatch so you can see according to the options that i have uh, as the error is there so a will not be the option b c d i am checking so in the b incompatible types yes we have this incompatible types string cannot be converted to the object right so option b is the correct option because of the type mismatch error moving ahead question number 7 So in this particular, what is the output of the following code? So we need an identify output of this particular code. So C class base is created first. In that we have some methods. After that, a derived extends base. So we have one more a class that is derived, which is extended from base. So this is the problem of inheritance that we have to check. After that, again some methods are there. Derived one is also created, which extends the derived. so base is the class from which derived has been created and from that again we have derived one okay and one more class we have tester separately which does not hold any uh, inheritance part with this a separate class tester is there and our main method is within that separate class tester so we will start checking from that uh, line so in the main method what they have done they have created a object of base reference instance very uh, instance object instance of object for derived class right so object of derived is created like this and then they are calling base ref run method so if you see object of derived is created and in that respective case the method run actually derived is extend uh, derived one is extending derived so it will pass the control over here but in the method or in the scope of this respective class we didn't find the run method so as the inheritance logic it will go pass to the upper class from where it has been inherited and here it can identify the run method now within that run you can see fun is again called right so as within the class it will pass the control to the fun method and it will return one within that fun method there is a return one so this will executed in this manner because of the inheritance and because of the calling of the internal functions one which is not present and due to the inheritance it passes the control to another one and within that we have some methodology so it will return one according to the code whatever is provided so the output of this question is option a that is one so i hope uh, you have got the answers of all the questions and it will be helpful for you thank you